slim is as real as you can get. And see, everybody look at the, the thug part and, oh, slim is about drama. No, man. Slim was the type of person, you know how some rappers, you know, you can tell, you could do a song and it could be about somebody else. So it could be about partially about you or it can be all about you. Whatever he right. rapped, he really lived it. I'm talking about we could be sitting in the studio, KL and I, and back then, and he come in there. And he come in there and you see the gun hot. You know, he didn't got into it with somebody. You know what I'm saying? And and he just like, I need a beat. I need something. You know, and he used to call KL Funky Fingers. You know, Funky Fingers, I need something like this. And, and he get in there and he going to tell exactly how it happened. You know, how he feeling. You know, KL always tell a story, man, to show you how real he was. And I think I, I New Orleans identified because he was New Orleans. He was that typical young man from New Orleans that I'm not going to start it, but we're going to go to war when you bring it to me, and I'm not going to stop. You know, and, and, and he was that type of person where he had you no matter what. If he was standing up talking to you, you know, and you can handle your own, but if somebody coming with problems that you got, that became his problem. He was a good dude. You know, funny dude, you know what I'm saying? Outside of all the what people think, man, I mean, funniest things that, you know, and he was typically, you know, he was New Orleans, and he was the type of person, man, like KL told a story, and, and, you know, it was it was real, where, you know, think about it, he was one of the first artists ever really to tell the truth, like, I, I, I was messing with dope, like, for real. Like, saying, you know, and he came in there, like, I got to get off this shit, man. You know what? K, I I need a track. And he and Kel was like, man, you gonna rap about snorting this shit? He said, I did it. I'm doing it. I'm, I can't be fucking with it. I gotta get my mind right. So I'm about to tell it, tell it how it is. And that was him, you know. And and he cared about everybody around him. He was typical New Orleans, you know. What I mean, you know, soldier Reeboks, you know what I'm saying? Which Reebok better up that money to his family, you know? What I mean, all the millions of pairs they sold with soldier written on it. Um, you know, the fatigues and, and he really lived that life, but he didn't, he wasn't what people assume. And the reason why he was so, so big to New Orleans was because they identified him slim, not no big dude, but you're going to have to beat him now and you're going to have to kill him. It was just, that was young New Orleans at that time where it was like do or die. And it was one foot in the street and he, he wanted one, he wanted out, but he, he was he was also in the studio, you know. But he 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 was New Orleans. That was New Orleans. His look, the way he talk, the way he act, you know what I'm saying. And he was so talented to the fact of he was a bounce artist, and then he, you know, he transformed into a rap artist. You feel what I'm saying? So he was able to do what he conquered both worlds. And New Orleans bounce was big. You know, like house in Chicago and and go go in D.C. or whatever, would not man. I right. mean, he was he conquered that, and then he then he made that transition, that switch, and it was his style. He didn't copy off nobody else. That was who he was. How you know, and and the talent, man. People never know, man. I, I remember coming home just to show you who he really was when he came home from jail and signed with us. You know, he walked in, man, and told KL, man, what you got for me. And and KL pressed play, and he just said, stop it. He walked in, they said, run it back. And he did not mess up. Ad libs, doubles, everything, and did, from, I'm, I'm going to hit cat, No Limit Like Pac, hit that rope, and knocked it out and said, I'll be back, man. I'm coming back. I'm going to finish my album. I got to go see my mama. Not go see no bro. See, that was the specialness of him. I got to go see my mama. Now you you right. in jail, and most dudes, like, I'm trying to get me something. He came to the studio right. first. Then when you know picked up you know his check and everything came and then knocked one song out and went to his mama, that was him, you know. So he was New Orleans, and 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 you know this dude when he performed in New Orleans, man, my first show ever performing was opening up for him and Joe Black, a kid in New Orleans that was big, and I never I thought the building was gonna gonna collapse, bro. When he came out and he right. went to you want it, you got it. They went to shake in that building, bro. I was like, man, I got to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I never seen it. And he brought out the whole hood. That's how gay, That's how real. That's how good and real and how much New Orleans. He was one person that would get everybody from different wards. They would take that chance. Probably die that night because they're beefing, but they was coming to see him. 
And he was yeah, New Orleans, he was, man. I mean, he was everything. He, his look, yeah. talk, everything, man. Everything he do, he was with New Orleans. You wanted to know what a, a, a young New Orleans dude was. If you just heard it on songs, just go look at him. That's the way they dress. That's the way they look. That's the way they talk. You know what I'm saying? That's the way they handled themselves. You know, and he was a good dude, man. Everybody look at the thug part about it, man. The dude I know is the dude that cared about his mom, that loved KL, you know, that, that cared about any one of us. And if our problems was his problems, then he was younger. You feel what I'm saying? And, and he would listen if you really, if he cared about you, you tell him, slow down, calm down, don't do that. He going to respect that. You know what I'm saying? But, at, you know what I mean? But at the same time, man, he was a guy that was going to be out there. Yeah. I want to ask you about uh, Soldier Slim. You know what I'm saying? You you, uh, um, you, know, you work with him on you know, several occasions. Um, wh- what could you say about Soldier Slim? Slim was, a, Slim was a real cat. He was about his money. You know what I'm saying? He just, he another one. ain't hold his tongue. And, and you know what I'm saying? And I just, that, you know, the outcome of his life is just, you know, you know, it's just a reciprocation of a man that don't hold his tongue. You know what I'm saying? And and whatever the case may be, we lost a, a, a dope MC and we lost a young brother to violence. You know what I'm saying? That nobody is about to benefit from it. You know what I'm saying? You left a mother mourning and you left fans mourning over whatever the case may be. I don't even know the details of all of the business of that. I just know that, you know, one day I'm talking to him, recording to him, and then the next day the man was murdered. Murdered. Well, you know, I always, you know, uptown, you know, you got the Magnolia and Alphamine and the Cali Project within walking distance. So, you know, I was always like the top DJ, not just being in the city, but mainly uptown, which is my area, you know, so... I pretty much had all those projects on lock, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, only one time I always knew Slim, but shit, I knew him first for cutting hair, you know what I'm saying, and, and hustling, you know what I'm saying? And so one time, you know, I was DJing in the Magnolia. We was up on the, you know, on the top deck. And, um, you know, Slim, you know, he always did his, you know, when I found out he did it, he really didn't want to, you know, just, do it, do it. So, you know, one time, you know, I was back there spinning, project pack, sound bumping. So he was like, man, let me get on the mic. So I gave him the mic, and he squatted down because I was up. You know, I was, like, up on the top deck, and, you know, I was, like, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, just, like, 12, 13 foot down, you know, from the from the floor. So he grabbed the mic, he nailed down, and, you know, I ran some records, and I started spinning them. And he started doing his thing, and so you know, I just stopped, and I made him stand up so the people could see. And so I'm um, like, man, like after he did his thing, he rocked it, and he said, he's like, man, like I didn't want the people to see me doing this yet, you know what I'm saying? So like, man, look, you saw what you did to him. So I told him, man, look, when you, when you really want to make something happen, come, you know, and you know, we gonna get in the studio for real, and and you know, make real records. You know, because he was always, Slim was a bounce all his first, but he was on that bounce gangster shit. Yeah. So, um, Slim came to the house, you know, I had a, I had a basement, you know, studio in my basement, my grandma's basement. And so, um, shit from there, you know, Slim came in, we cut a couple of records and just, we just put them out in the streets and it got pop. You know, the song we did, it got hot and now the rap from that and on top of it, I was DJing in the biggest club, so as soon as I'm recording, it, I'm going in the club and push it. You know what I'm saying? So it got hot, and that's when you know that's when the, that's when the birth of Slim as a rapper came. You know, and 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 the rest is history. You know, he's a legend. What what is what is he to the city of New Orleans, man? He what he is in New Orleans is what Pac is L.A. Yeah. California, period. The West Coast. You know what I'm saying? So I don't care or give a fuck who say what. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was to, you know, even the top niggas know who ran the city as a rapper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and that that's just how it is. You know, as, even as of today, it don't matter. Well, you know, like, what, what was Slim like? We I've, I've heard a million stories about how much he meant to the city of New Orleans. Uh, just give us a, 
got any cool sort of fun story or, you know, explain how big he was in, in the city? Yeah, man, uh, Slim is, like, considered, uh, like, New Orleans hip-hop royalty uh, still. Yeah. You know, that's not going to go away. And actually, I met BG, you know, being that cash money first, and I didn't realize mm-hmm. how much BG was like, it was like he was like Slim. And Slim always called him, that's my son or my little brother. When I finally met Slim, uh, by the time I met him, he was so the Slim. Before that, he was Magnolia. Yeah. And uh, he, he, the dude just, he liked to work. He was easy to work with. Uh, he, he was easy to get along with. He had some good ideas. And, I, and I'll tell you this. Uh, not long before he passed, he was in the medicine uh, medicine cabinet for uh, Beast by the Pound Studio, the medicine man studio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, he was sitting there and he was eating, and he gave me the concept. And I haven't told anybody the concept. It was a beat that he wanted to do. He said, oh, you're the only one I can get to do this beat. But we never got to work on it. And I've been holding it. I won't tell anybody, not even now, <laughs> tell anybody what the concept was. But it was so dope that at some point I'm going to pull it out. I would prefer to pull it out with some of his lyrics, but it was, I didn't even, I think like a musician, but the way he laid it out to me, I don't even think on that level. So I can't wait to use it somewhere, but you know, I'm being respectful yeah. because he gave me the idea. I don't want to give it to anybody else. I just don't want to. Exactly. I feel you on that. That's some real shit. Yeah. Uh, have you, have you ever met his son? Little soldier son? Nope. I have no, I mean, not, you know, you know, everybody knew Katrina happened. Everybody scattered. Everybody went everywhere. We kind of bounced and bounced around. So there's a lot of people that if they walked up on me right now, I wouldn't know unless they introduced me or who they are or what they're doing. And, you know, so, no, I've never met his son. I've never met his son. I'd love to meet him, but I've never met him. Yeah. 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 He's doing his thing, too. Um, you know, okay. so, so is his, uh, his younger cousin, uh, Soldier Kuluminati. Sounds we had KLC on, okay. on the show. We uh, we brought him on. Dude sounded, uh-huh. I mean, he sounds just like his cousin. It's amazing. Really? Um, okay. Yeah, very talented. Very talented. Both of those guys. Little Soldier Slim and Soldier Kaluminati. Uh okay. I'll send you some links to their stuff later so you can check them out. Um, yeah, please. But, uh, 